Hey, I'm Mark Gilfix. I'm a partner at Gilfix and the Paul Associates. I want to talk today briefly about trustees. Trustees 101, what you need to know. There's a lot of confusion out there. So let's go to the slides. What are we talking about here today? Trustees 101, what is a trustee and how do I choose one and what do they need to know? And we get it. Legal terms can be super confusing. You might be confused about what the term trustee is and what it means. You're not alone. And you may not be sure who to name in your documents or what they need to know. And of course, we're here to help. The topic of this video, Trustees 101, I'm going to go over what a trustee is, the role they play in your living trust, what they do, how do you choose your trustee, how many do you need, and how can you prepare them ahead of time to make sure you have the right people. This is, of course, for educational purposes only. It's not legal advice. It's meant to empower you with knowledge. And of course, my firm can help you if you want to meet with us one-on-one, -on -one, Bill Vicks and the Poll Associates. So the legal jargon, you can find plenty of definitions online. Look it up. What is a trustee? A trustee is a person or firm that holds entities and administers property or assets for the benefit of a third party. A lot of legal jargon. What is it in plain English? Well, it's someone or some entity that you entrust to oversee the management of your assets for you, for your benefit or for someone else, if you can't do it. Um, in plain English, you're giving someone the power via a trust document, oversee your assets for you or for whoever the beneficiary of that trust is. And they have to manage the assets conservatively. They can't take big risks, but they have to put them to work productively. So for a living trust, the most common type of trust, you might have one. If you don't talk to us, you need a living trust. But if when you set up the living trust, you are your own initial trustee. You're the beneficiary and you're your own trustee. The key and one of the main purposes of a trust is to make sure that if something happens to you, if you're out of it, someone else can step in and that's your successor trustee. They can step in and manage your trust assets for your benefit. And when you pass away, that's your successor trustee. When you pass away, that same successor trustee is in charge of overseeing the distribution of your assets, the administration of your estate according to the trust terms. So their job is to help you if something happens to you and to oversee the distribution, distribution of your estate after you're gone. Think of the trustee as your quarterback. You know, think of Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't run the ball often. He hands it off. He doesn't miss the ball to himself. He throws it to his wide receivers. He has a whole team around him. And your trustee does not have to do everything him or herself. They hire an accountant to help. They hire financial advisors. They, of course, hire a lawyer to help make sure they're doing it right. So they don't have to do everything themselves. They get to use trust assets to pay the, these professionals, of course, for your benefit. Um, and really, what do they do? And again, in plain English, they manage trust assets. If your new home should be in your trust, if you have that investment accounts, they control the trust assets. They make investment decisions. They make distribution decisions. How should the money be spent to support you? There's other types of trusts, of course, special needs trusts, family protection trusts that you might set up for a third party for your child. And then the trustee's job is to oversee assets for the benefit of your child or for whoever that trust is set up. After you pass away, the trustee's job is to oversee the distribution of your assets according to the trust terms, to comply with all the legal and financial issues they, that they face. They have to hire a lawyer to do this. Don't try this at home. Um, our firm, Gill Fix and the Polls, work with hundreds, if not thousands of families um, on the administration of the states after people pass away. But the trustee's job is to do that. Uh, and the powers the trustee has are pretty wide. They can invest. They can buy and sell. They can loan and borrow. They have a role in deciding where you live because they control the purse strings. Um, they can hire and fire your caregivers. Now, they don't make medical decisions. That's in your advance directive. But they control the purse strings, which definitely can relate to medical care and the care that you get. Now, how do you choose your trustee? A lot of confusion about this. You want to choose someone who's responsible and organized and who keeps good records. They don't have to be a legal or financial expert. That can't hurt, but you don't need that. And we recommend you name at least two backups. So if the person you name first can't do it, you have someone else who can step in. Ideally, they should be a little bit younger than you, but if it's okay if they're around your age, but you don't you want someone who's going to be around in the future. When you're looking at who to choose to, we think of it as like a dartboard, and the center would be a super responsible, close family member. Maybe it's a child, maybe it's a niece or a nephew or a sibling. Second, you look at close long-term friends, but be careful there because friends can come in and out of your life sometimes. Third, if there's no one in your inner circle, you might look to the world of professionals. There are professional fiduciaries who do this, do this serve as trustees for a living. There are also attorneys. Some attorneys serve as trustee. And then the next ring out, I think, would be trust departments at banks or financial institutions. They can be solid, but they can be very hit or miss. It really depends on the institution and who is serving at that time. Should you have co-trustees? Well, I want to quote Albert Bandura, famous Stanford psychology professor, um, who's also actually a client of the firm many years ago. 
uh, before he passed away from one of his books, when everyone is responsible, no one is really responsible. We don't typically recommend multiple trustees at a time, co-trustees, because if everybody has the job, nobody does. You want one person at a time, typically. Not always, but we generally recommend one trustee at a time. Questions to ask potential trustees, are you willing and able to do this? What's your experience managing assets and property? Have you done this before? Do you understand my needs and my health issues? If it's a professional you're naming, do you have a succession plan? What if you go out of business? What if you quit? Who's going to step in for you? What are you going to do next? Now, these choices are not set in stone. For most of your living trusts, you can change this as often as you want. You have to revisit it at least every three to five years with an attorney who specializes in this. Or if something changes in your life, if the person you named a couple of years ago, you know, can't do it. Hey, you got to update your trust or you could be left hanging. Um, this is especially critical for special needs trust, if you're creating a trust for a child with a disability, make sure you have the right trustee structure in place. Now, what should you do to prepare your trustees ahead of time? Talk to them. Don't leave them in the, in the dark about the fact they're named in your documents. Keep good records, keep lists, um, contact information for your advisors, your accountant, your lawyer, your financial advisors, lists of accounts. If, you, if you're comfortable with it, give them a copy of your trust so they know what to expect and what's in there. You should talk to your attorney about this. We routinely meet with clients and their backup trustees to go over this. And as I mentioned before, you change this. You can change your trustees and your living trusts. Now, there are irrevocable trusts that are more complicated. Sometimes you can still do that. It gets a little more. Talk to your lawyer. Talk to us if you have questions about an irrevocable trust. Action steps you should take. If you have a living trust, review it. Um, our firm, Guildfix and the Pole, can, of course, help you. We have many webinars on our Guildfix Law YouTube channel about how we think about trust planning and how you structure your plan. If you don't have a living trust, you need one. We can help with that. But work with an expert who knows what they're doing. Um, we can, of course, help you. But you need to work with an expert attorney who really specializes in this. How can we help? Well, Subscribe to our Guilfix Law YouTube channel if you thought this was useful. Uh, like this video, share it. And of course, if you'd like to work with us, join our client community. You can contact us. We're easy to find. Um, Guilfix.com, 650-493-8070. I hope you got a lot out of this. Uh, the role of trustee is just so important. So again, I'm Mark Guilfix for the Guilfix Law YouTube channel. Subscribe if you like this, but I hope you're staying safe, sane, and healthy. And thanks for spending a couple of minutes with me.